Nano Tyrannus! Small tyrant. The baby. Is a genus of Tyrannosauroid. A dinosaur, as you can imagine with a name like that, that lived in what is now Western North America in the late Cretaceous period. Now, calling them nano, I mean, they are small compared to, say, a T Rex, an actual T Rex. But Nano Tyrannus wasn't, like, small, small. It was uh, about uh, slightly taller than us, so, you know, still not, not something you would want to necessarily mess with. But these smaller carnivores, by comparison, are believed to have dwelled alongside Tyrannosaurus in the same exact environment, with the adults weighing about 1,552 pounds. Comparing them to their close relatives Tyrannosaurus, in addition to being smaller in general, they had a much more slender build, a low skull, and proportionally longer arms. But it's believed they would have been pretty strong as the muscle attachments on their necks in particular are shown to be quite large, meaning that if they got a hold of something, they could just shake it into oblivion. They also had pretty long legs, and based off of all this, they seemed to be more of a pursuit predator, something smaller but was pretty fast. The original tight species was Nanotyrannus lancensis, and the original holotype specimen, a single skull, was collected in 1942 and described in 1946. Originally, Nanotyrannus was not called Nanotyrannus. The 1946 description was handled by Charles W. Gilmore, and he thought that it was actually another species of Gorgosaurus. Which, to be fair, wasn't an unreasonable assessment because Gorgosaurus is a Tyrannosaurid. However, much later in 1988, Robert T. Baker would re-describe it alongside Michael Williams and Phil Curry. They felt that there were too many differences with the specimen to actually put it under the Gorgosaurus genus, so they gave it a new genus, Nanotyrannus. Their study into this skull showed that the bones were fused, implying that this animal was fully grown. But understand that as far back as 1965, it had been suggested that this animal wasn't a separate species at all, or separate genus. Some paleontologists believe that this was in fact just a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex. The similarities were evident, as in many ways Nanotyrannus was a smaller T-Rex. There were some minor differences, but not ones that couldn't change as an animal grew. But it remained its own thing until 1999, when another study by Thomas Carr indicated that this particular specimen was in fact immature, leading most of the paleontological community to decide that this animal was just a juvenile T-Rex, rendering Nanotyrannus not actually a thing anymore. In 2001, some new remains were discovered. A very complete juvenile Tyrannosaur nicknamed Jane. The discovery of Jane prompted a conference on Tyrannosaurs in general, held at the Burpee Museum of Natural History in 2005. The general consensus was that the discovery of Jane indicated that in fact, Nanotyrannus wasn't a thing, that what they had had this whole time was just the skull of a juvenile T-Rex. About the only one who questioned this was Peter Larson, who... <laughs> really? See, this is a problem, because Larson was not really considered a credible source of information. So, with him being like the only one defending Nanotyrannus, a lot of the other paleontologists put even more doubt onto it. And that's pretty much where things ended for several years, but in 2006, there was another fossil discovery that changed the game. This fossil was pretty incredible. It was a virtually complete theropod specimen alongside a ceratopsid. Very, very impressive find, all things considered. The ceratops was a triceratops, and both Robert Baker and Larson studied it on site pointing that out, as well as identifying the theropod as Nanotyrannus, because both of them agreed that it should be a separate thing, but a lot would have called that a juvenile T-Rex. Regardless, the fossil was pretty awesome. They nicknamed that individual Bloody Mary. Nice. But the fossil remained in private hands until 2020, so no one else was able to give it a proper look. The reason why it remained in private hands that long is that the ownership of the fossil was called into question. 
It's just like the Sioux situation, pretty much. The entire issue rose up to the Montana Supreme Court, who decided that the owners of the land where the fossil had been found, named Marianne and League Murray, should retain ownership of the specimen. Fair enough, and the two did agree to sell the paired fossils to a museum. It would be acquired by the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, where the specimens were prepared and analyzed, and this really changed everything we thought we knew about Nanotyrannus. Remember, most didn't think that it was a thing anymore. But, just recently, in 2025, two paleontologists, Lindsay Zano and James Napoli, published an initial description of Bloody Mary, along with an extensive revision of the genus Nanotyrannus. As part of their analysis, Bloody Mary was revealed to be mature. She wasn't going to grow any bigger than she already was, meaning that this was no juvenile T-Rex, this was something else. As part of the study, they also identified another species of Nanotyrannus, Nanotyrannus lethaeus, based on the Jane specimen. And to be clear, this is all very new data, and not everyone agrees just yet. And this is the thing with paleontology, this happens all the friggin' time. Whenever there's a new discovery in a new scientific paper announcing what they think, that's what they are, announcing what they think, the news media runs away with it, saying that, Ah, look, it's back! They said so! These guys, over here! And don't get me wrong, I actually do agree with this. Straight up, I genuinely think that Nanotyrannus is a separate thing. However, the same thing happened when they announced they were bringing back Brontosaurus. And still, not every paleontologist agrees with that decision. These sorts of things in science, especially when it's stuff from the far distant past, isn't necessarily concrete, like we don't know for sure in some aspects, and there's still debate and disagreement. So, just want you to keep that in mind in case something changes, but as I said, I do think that this is correct. For one thing, in terms of arguing for the validity of Nanotyrannus in general, well, one of the things they pointed to when they were just looking at that original skull was the number of teeth. Nanotyrannus specimens tend to have 14 to 15 teeth on each side of the upper jaw, and 17 teeth on each side of the lower jaw. But adult T-Rexes only had 11 or 12 teeth positions on their upper jaws, and 11 to 14 on the lower. That's pretty weird, right? Well, to be fair, studies into Tyrannosaurid growth patterns, particularly involving Gorgosaurus again, showed that the number of teeth did, in fact, decrease as the animals grew. So, this wasn't necessarily a guarantee that this was a separate thing. But that may be a Gorgosaurus thing, because studies into Tarbosaurus batar showed that, in their case, there was little to no decrease in tooth count during growth. And Tarbosaurus was a good one to study, because they had several juvenile specimens that were even younger than what they were thinking the Nenotyrannus specimens were. As far as Larson is concerned, he pointed out that the arms on Nanotyrannus were proportionally larger in general. They were longer and bulkier, and he found it strange that they wouldn't grow along with the rest of the body, right? It's actually a fair point. A limb proportion analysis was published in 2016 and suggested that Nanotyrannus has differing levels of cursoriality. But the problem with that is that they had a very low sample size, so they couldn't necessarily conclude that 100% for sure. And many, 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 many other studies concluded that Nanotyrannus was just a juvenile T-Rex. But as I said just recently, they've gone back on this with the latest study that shows, no, no, they were probably completely different. And one of the things that paleontologists kept arguing about, and one of the reasons why they pushed so hard for Nanotyrannus to just be a juvenile T-Rex, is that they didn't necessarily agree that another predator could occupy the same space as T-Rex. Because regardless of whether or not these are juvenile T-Rexes, and I really don't think they are, they did live alongside T-Rex. They lived in the same environment. And paleontologists were like, how could they do that? Well, um, very easily, I'd argue. Because if we look at the world today, there are plenty of environments with multiple different species of predators. Wolves live alongside cougars. Lions live alongside hyenas. 
Sharks and barracudas exist at the same time, like the notion that only one predator can exist in a single environment at any given time is ridiculous because it's obviously, obviously incorrect. Most environments have more than one predator species, and generally one of the species is smaller than the other one, so that the smaller one can catch a different type of prey, faster prey. The Rex probably didn't bother with smaller animals because well, for one thing, they'd probably have a bit of trouble catching them, and for two, it wouldn't give them that much food for their bulky bodies. But Nanotyrannus was a lot faster, and probably could catch smaller prey. In the case of the dueling dinosaur specimen, where Bloody Mary is from, she was fighting a small Triceratops, not a mature one. The point here is that these dinosaurs were hunting different kinds of prey in the same environment of T-Rex, as a result, there was plenty of food for them both to exist at the same time, and probably not bother each other too much, mostly because I'm pretty sure a T-Rex would murder Nanotyrannus if they got anywhere near them, but you see my point. Regardless, based off of current analysis, it seems Nanotyrannus is here to stay. For now. But, you know, you never, you never know. <laughs> Things can change at any time. And with that, a special thank you. Go out to my Apex Predators. Arthur Roy, Metal for Life guy, and Anti Raven. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fun farewell.